We're here to talk about the Slim Fit Boiler by Wild McLean. In this segment, we're talking about startup procedure. Have to make sure you have a call for heat coming into this boiler. Obviously, that's going to be from your thermostat circuit. And make sure that's correct. Now, before we even turn the boiler on, you want to make sure you have gas pressure coming in. Because if you don't, out of the box, this boiler has a low pressure switch. That low pressure switch is set to trip at two inches of water column. So obviously, out of the crate, that switch is already tripped. So before you turn the boiler on, have gas come to the unit, check your pressures, reset the switch through the cover. Once it's set up, now you can turn power on. Now if you don't do that, no big deal. You're going to have to reset the switch, but the solar control is also going to note a lockout because the pressure switch tripped, and you will probably have to reset the solar control. Again, no big deal if you forget, but just to know that that pressure switch is tripped, obviously, because you're not hooked up to any gas. Now, once you've confirmed that, you're going to check your gas pressure reading in the middle tapping on your gas valve. You're going to remove that eighth inch port, Put your manometer on there, and you're going to check and make sure you have a minimum when the boiler is operating at full capacity, no less than three inches of water column, and no more than 14 inches of water column. In earlier segments, we mentioned to you that the high limit pressure switch is set at 14 inches manual reset. So if you don't use a 100% lockup regulator, you will have nuisance lockouts on the high pressure switch, anything above 14. So be sure that that's taken care of. Once we've achieved its maximum firing rate, we're going to take our combustion analyzer. Now our combustion analyzer is going to be inserted in the uh, flue section of the boiler. We supply you with an insert area so you don't have to enter or protrude in the flue pipe at all. Once you're in there, you're going to adjust your analyzer. We're going to see if we fall within the right CO2 levels. Again, in your manual, we give you a listing of what those CO2 levels are going to be. And you need to be between 8.5 and 10% CO2. Optimum, optimum uh, uh, CO2 level would be 8.75. Now, if you're outside that range, after you've looked at your analyzer, you're going to need to make a small adjustment. You remove your panel. Top of your gas valve is where your adjustment is. Hex key. You're going to make small 16th inch turns as you watch your analyzer. So every time you make a small adjustment, take a look at your analyzer and see what changes. In about 30 seconds or so, you should see the change once the sampling is pumped through your analyzer. Now, once you've gotten through that, now we're going to fire the boiler to its minimum level. And we need to check the low fire, and it needs to be within the same parameters of 8.5 and 10% CO2. And again, if you're not, we have a low fire adjustment here. You remove the screw cap. Underneath, you'll see the adjustment screw. And you're going to, again, make very small changes. And you're going to check your analyzer after each change to be sure that you optimize about 8.75 or within that range. If you're within the range, put everything back together and you're good to go. If you are not in the range, make your adjustment accordingly. Get to the optimum position if you can, or close to it. Once you're there, we're going to put the cap back on your low fire. Bring the boiler back up to high fire maximum RPMs. Recheck your CO2 levels to make sure you're between the 8.5 and 10% CO2, and you're good to go. Now, once you've done all that, one last thing you should do document that information on the back of your manual. This allows you to help you with maintenance down the road. We'll recover that, review that in our next segment of maintenance. Now, once we've done that, we want to make sure you check your thermostat circuit, make sure we do have a, a call for heat coming into your boiler. We're going to inspect and fill your condensate on the system making sure that trap, again, that we talked about in earlier segments on how to install, we want to make sure that is filled with water so we don't blow flue gases out, and making sure that it's installed and double checking that it is because you will condense. When his boiler starts firing, it's going to look like you have a hose of water coming out. So we can condense pretty good. We extract a lot of energy 
uh, from those flue gases, and we have a lot of condensate uh, that comes out of your boiler. Now, high altitude, if you're over 5,500 feet, well, that's pretty high, but if you're up in that location, well, we need to configure the solar control so the boiler knows that it's in a high altitude location. Follow your slim fit manual and be sure to configure it properly before you start uh, your final checks. Eliminate all system leaks. Again, we mentioned that in the prior segment uh, that you have to be sure that we have no leaks on the system because that's only going to harm your brand new boiler and nobody's going to be happy with that. So make sure you take care of the, the total, total system, check everything out, make sure it's ready to go, and follow your boiler manual uh, with even more details in it uh, than we can give you here on the video. Thank you so much and we'll talk to you in the next segment.